morning. I'm off on my 12 hour shift, so it's about 6 o'clock in the morning, 6 a.m. And I'm testing out a sample today. It's called Fur de Bengal. Uh, the company is called J. J. Leskender. J. Leskender. Probably not saying that correctly. But I, this is one of the fragrances that I got from Jovoy when I got a load of samples a while ago. I did do a little video on it. Uh, what does it say in here? It says, Passion, Excellence, Tradition. An elixir formed around a vanilla from Madagascar, embellished by Bulgarian rose oil, the fruity notes of Divana, and the natural essential oils of yellow Italian mandarin. So, Ferdi Bengal, that's what the... Uh, inside of the sample looks like I've sprayed it on already got it on this hand definitely smell the vanilla that comes out in the opening and I wouldn't necessarily have understood it was mandarin but I do get that citrusy element I think that's kind of what I'm getting at the moment. It's slightly woodsy, not overtly sweet vanilla with that citrusy element coming from the mandarin. And yeah, something that's a little hint of fruitiness that I, I don't know what Divana actually is, so I will do my research on that. But there is a fruitiness, but it's not like a dried fruit, which is good because I don't really like dried fruits in fragrances. It's not plummy. If anything, it's a little bit more like Angelica, which is like a fruity, sweety smell. That's really all I can describe it as at the moment. A little bit fresh from the citrusy and then a lot of deeper notes coming probably from the vanilla and the fruitiness. But let's explore the fragrance, see how it goes. Okay, so I've been wearing the fragrance all day long. I've done a 12 hour shift and I've also had half an hour journey there and half an hour journey back. So we're talking 13 hours and the fragrance is still on my skin. It is unbelievable. If you are looking for longevity, then that is definitely a really, really good long lasting fragrance. So let's talk about how it smells because I think that's more important than anything else. So. As I said earlier, when I first sprayed it on, it was definitely a vanilla fragrance. It wasn't mega sweet. What I found is after it had developed on my skin for, say, 10, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, it did get sweeter, and I was getting this hot milk note, which was really lovely. It was like steamed milk on the top of a hot chocolate or a cappuccino. In actual fact, it, all, it did smell a little bit chocolatey. It was really creamy and powdery at the same time, so it was quite delectable, a very, very nice gourmand fragrance. There was a little hint of a woodsiness in it, which stopped it from being too sweet, or it stopped it from getting boring. I don't like things that are just 100% pure sweetness. I do like something that just pulls it back a little bit. So it was kind of like a, a sweet, sweetened hot milk, there was definitely a muskiness to it, but a very clean musk, not anything animalic. Clean, musky, a bit powdery, very creamy, and a hint of sawdust. And on my skin, it didn't change very much after that. It just became extremely smooth. So when you first spray it, there is a little bit of a hint of a sharpness to it. I'm not sure what causes that, but that mellows out very quickly and I would say it's a super creamy super smooth fragrance it smells a little bit like hot chocolates it smells a little bit like marshmallows as well and what happens then is it really just gently just gently sort of creeps closer to your skin so in terms of projection in sillage probably average it's not a hard hitting fragrance there's no big notes in there. I mean, I'll read you the notes. So the notes are fig, almond, artemisia, rose, iris, mandarin, tolu balsam, vanilla, musk, and tonka. So I guess what makes it sharp in the opening is, is the mandarin, but that definitely does fade quite quickly. And you are mostly left with the sort of sweet gourmand 
notes that generally kind of feel a bit like base notes. I didn't pick out the rose. My nose just couldn't detect rose. Whether that's a fault with my nose or not, I don't know. A fig is generally not as the cat trying to get out of cat flap. She's not brilliant at it. Fig is not a note I generally enjoy. But in this fragrance, I believe that's what I referred to earlier as Divana. So the company website lists Divana and Fragrantica lists Fig. So I think they're probably one and the same. I should have checked, didn't get around to it. Very, very busy day at work. But the Fig to me is coming off more like just a light fruitiness. A light, sweet fruitiness. Not the fig that I'm used to from, say, Fico de Malfi by Aqua de Palma. Not like that. And I, I, I just don't love fig. I don't hate it. It's just not quite for me. But in this fragrance, it's fine. I quite like it. So uh, almond. I can understand almond being in here, but it's probably more like a heliotrope rather than a full-on. So it doesn't smell like marzipan. It's more of a subtle almond. Uh, vanilla and musk are absolutely very noticeable. The fragrance is 200 euros for 75 mils. And I did a bit of research on the house. They actually started out in 1903. So they are a historic house. But come the early 70s, 1970s, they, uh, they ended up folding the owner who was a chemist the owner perfumer he passed away in the early 70s and then the uh the, they didn't continue until it was picked up in 2015 by a third generation of the family a grandson who's relaunched the brand and he has access to the old um information the old recipes and what do they call them Forgotten this. He has access to the old recipes and notes from the original uh, founder. So that's quite cool, I think. I do like a house with a bit of history. If you want a comparison fragrance, then I've got two. One is super expensive, one is super cheap. So the super expensive one is Queer Beluga from Galan, from the Lart and Matty airline. It is similar in the same ballpark in that you get this kind of suede powdery creamy vanillic thing that's going on it's also quite similar to our rehab choco musk so that's a completely different price band you can get that so so cheap but it does bear a fair amount of similarity i'm not saying it's that close but i think if you like both of those fragrances this is going to be in your ballpark would I buy it? There's a question. The only reason I wouldn't buy this fragrance is because I have already got lots of really amazing vanilla heavy fragrances in my collection. If I didn't, I would absolutely consider it because it is gorgeous. It's really, really good. The performance was amazing. Remember, I only sprayed it from a sample. I think had I had a full bottle and really gone for it, then the fragrance probably would have projected a lot more as well. But the longevity is really, really excellent. To last 13 hours and still be quite noticeable, it's not like you have to really go hunting for it. It's not even a skin scent. It's still gonna, it's still projecting a little bit. So I'm quite impressed with that. That's all I'm gonna have to say on this fragrance. It was just a quick testing from a sample and I have had a very busy day. I've not been able to take too many notes or think too much about what I'm wearing but I hope that it helps you to decide if it's something that you'd like to sniff at some point. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.